Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about empath and a narcissist relationships. Yes, we are. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. Click the subscribe button so you can get the notifications for when I post a video. So let's dig into it. If you are empathic, um, highly sensitive person, prophetic, if you fall in any of those categories, we tend to attract into our lives people that have narcissistic behaviors or narcissistic disorders. Now, I make a stipulation between narcissistic behavior and disorder because there are people with narcissistic behavior that grow into a place of maturity whether they go through a spiritual awakening or whether they just plain flat out grow up and those behaviors wane. Narcissistic disorder is, you know, more of an in-depth in -depth narcissist where they really have no desire to change. Now, I've heard people say, you know, narcissists can't change. I really don't ascribe to that. I believe anyone can change if they desire it, not because other people desire it for them. That's just my spiel on the whole narcissist thing. Now let's talk about why that is. Think about if you're, if you're prophetic, highly sensitive person or empath. Now if I use, I'm going to probably use those three words interchangeably, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay. If you are that person, you're spiritually attuned, you're spiritually aligned, you're here um, for a specific spiritual purpose, not only for you to go to, through a spiritual awakening, but to help others go through a spiritual awakening through the lessons that you learn, okay? The one thing that, and I think I've mentioned this before, the one thing that I learned um, growing up in a prophetic community as a, as a training, prophetic training, so to speak, in ministry, because I've been in ministry many years, there wasn't always a uh, emphasis on the lessons that you learn with prophetic learning. I, when I really begin to deal into the empath journey, which is the the same thing virtually, you know, some may disagree, but it's basically the same thing, you know, that high or the highly sensitive person that focused more on the lessons that you were learning and how you needed to heal yourself to create uh, the environment around you that you needed to create. And when I say heal yourself, uh, for those of you that ascribe to different, you know, religions, I'm not removing um, your 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 higher power or who you see as God in your life, all this kind of stuff. Um, I'm not removing that. But so when I say self healing, I'm re I'm making that statement in regards to what you can do on your own. You understand to pull you into a better, uh, a safer space, a healed space. Okay, so the empath is here. Think about it now. The empath shines the light. The prophetic person, the highly sensitive person, they shine the light. The narcissist is in a place of darkness. Okay, so they're in a place of controlling others, and typically, people with narcissistic behaviors or that are narcissists. They have other underlying issues like rejection, like abandonment, um, insecurities. All of those things play into the role they've created as a narcissist, all right? And they're drawn to the light, kind of like a moth to a flame. And that's why you find a lot of people that are empathic or prophetic or highly sensitive involved in toxic relationships with people that are controlling that are selfish they are they're literally their opposites the key here is when you know who you are spiritually and you're standing in that power when you come in contact with someone with narcissistic tendencies or traits 
That isn't a person that you're going to, you should keep in your inner circle. I want you to hear me well. That would be an individual that is going to teach you lessons and that you're going to teach lessons, but you can't do it from an inner circle space, if that makes sense. If you're not building, especially if you're not building yourself regularly, because you got to have something to combat the darkness. You have to have something to combat the selfishness, the abuse, uh, the insecurity. And I'm not talking about physical abuse because physical abuse, you need to take another step to remove yourself. But typically, narcissists are very verbally abusive. Um, they're self-sabotaging. They kind of tear down your spirit. Okay, if you have ambitions, they rip that apart by the things that they say, by either not believing in you or, you know, making less of your ideas. Any little thing to kind of rain on your parade and they do it over time so that your spirit is literally broken. Okay, so this is the thing you have to realize when you're when you are the person that is of the light. Your job is to make sure that you remain the light. It's th and I said this on my IG uh, channel. For those of you that want to follow me on IG, it is K Carissa Bass. That's C A R I S A B A S S. All one word. K Carissa Bass on IG. I, I put a post up and I talked about you're not here. For just for the sole purpose of healing others. A lot of people talk about a lot of empaths, a lot of prophetic people. You know, I've heard them say on many occasions, oh, I, I didn't go through for myself. I went through for someone else. No, you went through for yourself because you needed that lesson. See, I mean, I'm just, I put it on out there. Okay. You went through for yourself because you needed that lesson. We're not here just for other people. We're here for ourselves first. Remember now, you're trying to come home. You're trying to awaken to who you are. You know, you're trying to, to share this, this masquerade of humanness so that you can get back down to the spiritual being you really are and to stand in your power. Okay? Okay. You want to stand in your power. You don't want to keep getting ran over, you know, by people that are toxic. So you've got to realize, yes, I'm going to draw some people into my life, but where I put them is going to be key. You don't put someone that is toxic, that is selfish, that is self-serving directly in your inner circle. They have all that, uh, access to you and they sap your energy. You, you have you ever heard of someone draining your anointing, sapping your energy, the energy vampire, they all one and the same. Okay. So you've got to make sure that you are protecting yourself and you, that doesn't mean you, you fortress yourself in. Use maturity here. You need What you need to do is have a protection around you. There is spiritual attack, protection, okay? When you're meditating, when you're praying, you know, and you are engaging in your spiritual alignment, you know, with the spirit, you need to make sure that, that you sit in a place of protection, you, you pray a, uh, an, uh, a perimeter of protection around you because we're energy fields here, people. We are energy fields. We emit energy. You strip you of your humanness, we emit energy. So you need to place that perimeter of protection around you. And you need to become more self-aware and become more emotionally intelligent and more discerning and listen. There's no need to discern if you're going to ignore the, the signs. There's no need for that. So when you we look at those types of relationships, you have to be clear that you're learning something. You know, a narcissist may teach you patience because they're constantly, you know, taking their time getting to certain things. You know, and, and you have to realize something. There is something that person is teaching you and it may not take them long to teach you if you really stay in tune spiritually. Now, when you see that they're shedding some of those things, 
Okay, you then then at that point you're able to move them in a little closer to you, but you don't want to do that until after they have healed some of those areas and anyone can experience healing if they desire it. Okay? So so when you look we look at that dynamic the empath, highly sensitive person, a prophetic person, and the narcissist or, or someone with narcissistic behavior or controlling tendencies, okay? When you look at that, you can see why those two people are drawn together, but they're not drawn together for the reason that you think. They're not drawn together to become a power couple. You can't be a power couple in, in a misalignment. You, you can only do that whenever both parties have gone through a healing and experienced those lessons. So I hope something I've said today has helped you on your spiritual journey as you become more spiritually aligned, spiritually attuned, and more discerning, okay? And I want you to make sure that you're keeping yourself protected. Do what you need to do to, to keep yourself at a higher level of discernment and a higher level of spiritual attunement, okay? I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Toodles.